Love Steven Universe, Rick and Morty, OKKO, and Gravity Falls? And do you love Christmas? Can pick up a Roundtable Limited Edition 2017 Christmas sweater. Reprints every three days, but will be gone by the end of the month. Order it now to get it before Christmas. Link in the description. Please. Please help. A lot of people are famous for creating cartoons. Sometimes famous people make cartoons. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're completely horrible. But despite that uncertainty, when I found out that Tyler the Creator was making a cartoon, I was super hyped. He's been everywhere lately, what with his new album and the other show, Nuts and Bolts, where he looks and sees how things are made. It's like that other show, How It's Made, where they look at how things were made, but this one has Tyler, so it's good. Now Tyler's a pretty weird guy, and I'm pretty sure that's an understatement for anyone who knows his work. I mean, he's famous for eating a cockroach after all, so he's practically a perfect match for Adult Swim. I mean, Adult Swim is a breeding ground for the strange, and they're not afraid to experiment. So we have a weird musician making a weird cartoon for the weirdest channel on television. This could have been either really amazing or an utter failure. One way or another, I was still gonna watch it. It had a surprising amount of hype building up to it too. There was a great Comic-Con panel for it, and promos featuring the main character beating up an off-screen director really helped. See, you can tell that Tyler loves cartoons, and he's actually trying to make a cartoon here. When most celebrities get their own shows, everyone goes for the Seinfeld route, making it about their life or something boring like that. Yeah, that works, but they always risk falling in the sea of others doing the exact same thing. If Tyler was making a cartoon, it was gonna be an original idea and it was gonna be surreal. And I'm pretty sure he nailed it. So enough backstories, what is the jellies about? Cornell is a typical American kid, raised in a family of jellyfish. He never picked up on the fact that he was adopted, so when he does find out, it's earth shattering to him. This launches his journey to find himself and also the entire series. But don't get confused, this isn't some show about a teenage boy finding himself every week. It's actually impossible what'll happen in each episode. Every episode is completely different. One second they're in an old folks home for retired 90 celebrities, the next Cornell has gotten a sex change. It's all across the board here. The show takes place in the town of Walla Walla, Washington, which is pretty much your basic cartoon town. It has the whole Bojack Horseman thing where humans live alongside humanoid animals and they have relationships and somehow it's not weird. It puts the show in a sort of surrealist environment that fits it really well. One thing that the show doesn't shy away from is celebrity cameos. There's one episode, for instance, where Cornell goes to a lesbian bar and the rapper Young Ma is just there out of nowhere. Like, the references can be really well known or really obscure, but there's a lot of them. Like, the cameos don't have to be super well known people. The show also does a lot of pair type stuff. There's one episode that devotes most of its runtime to a Pimp My Ride parody, which is both hilarious because of the delivery and the fact that it's just not topical anymore. Not saying that references have to be topical in any sense of the word, but it's just something that hasn't been in the public eye lately, which is just hilarious to me that they included this. The parodies are never too overboard though, they just sometimes border on it. But the show does a good job of balancing these parodies with original plots and jokes and other surreal elements to keep it fresh. But what I think really makes the show is the character. Let's start with the main character, Cornell. Now at first glance, you could say he looks a lot like the creator Tyler, however, he's nothing like him. He isn't just some Tyler self-insert, he isn't even voiced by him, which is the most surprising to me. Instead, the legendary Phil Lamar lends his voice, famous for roles like Hermes on Futurama, Green Lantern, and Samurai Jack. Cornell is a happy kid who is the center of the show. His innocence creates a lot of comedy, something that the audience would think is crazy, he finds totally normal. Cornell is the type to try and fix things, that's where a lot of the show's plot lines come from. When his friend doesn't have a date to the prom, he'll just get a sex change, no biggie. Whatever it takes, he's gonna do it, whether it's good or bad. Cornell overall is a pretty perfect main character. I mean, we're boondocks, huh? Black dynamite, loiter squad. What are you? Huh? See I don't know. <laughs> Debbie is Cornell's mom and definitely the head of the household. She's outspoken, loud, and most definitely an alcoholic. One episode they actually have an intervention for her, it's just straight up. But I love her so much because she isn't the typical cartoon sitcom mom. She's not this quirky, wine-drinking, classic TV mom. She's rude, vulgar, and says what's on her mind, even if it's something that no one should ever say. She does what she wants, but she still cares about her family at the end of the day. She's strong and confident and seems like she doesn't care about anything, but the show isn't afraid to also show her vulnerable side. It just helps make her character more real. Oh, I see what's going on in here. Y'all trying to ambush a bitch with an intervention? Yeah, we are. <laughs> Y'all gotta catch me first. Barry Jelly is the lazy dad of the family. He's notorious for always spending the family's money and loving making smoothies, which is a weird quirk that comes up a lot. Up until episode six, he's probably the least developed character of the family, but that's when they flesh out his character with a backstory. He's a former hotshot high schooler who had big dreams, but they were ruined when he had kids. It's a classic tale. The dad is super mellow and overall lazy, which is almost the antithesis of his wife. It's a pretty great dynamic. 
dynamic. What sets him apart from other cartoon dads is that he's lazy, but not dumb. He's not Peter Griffin levels of idiotic or annoying in that sense. He's just sitting on the couch a lot. That's why I like him. I tried to put it behind me. I'm a grown ass man with kids and shit. I refuse to let this happen anymore. KY is Cornell's nerdy dry older sister. She's never shy to call out something for its stupidity or point out something obvious in the show. Always walking around like she hates everyone. On top of that, she's a hopeless romantic, but also just wants a lot of sex. She's kind of conflicting. For instance, one episode she's seen at a dance with a date, yet in another episode she gets the jelly equivalent of what I can only describe as a period, and then tries desperately to have somebody have sex with her. This show, the plot lines are weird. I mean, this all makes her sound pretty bad, but at the end of the day, she's somehow still likable. I can't put my finger on it, but I just can't bring myself to hate her. Ugh! Why is it so hard to get dick from a rapper? <coughs> This spot is designated for all of Cornell's friends. He has a little group about like three of them. The reason I bring them up is because they're one of my favorite friend side character group I've ever seen in a cartoon. They're all complete losers and they're all so genuine and wholesome, it's great. My favorite of these friends is by far Reggie. He's some scrawny redhead with a deep enchanting voice and I just love it. So is this show funny? Uh, short answer, yes it is. The show has some moments where I'm like, eh, but then it hits me with a joke and I just burst out laughing. It has a balance of both subtle comedy and also great one-liners. One thing I enjoy is the fact that it makes a lot of comments on race and jokes about it, but they're always funny and it never comes off as preachy. The show is able to bring up race issues and joke about it all without taking it to a super controversial place. The show relies a lot of its comedy on not only dialogue, but just the absurdity of it all. Like literally when the main villain turned out to be the guy from Pimp My Ride or the fact that Cornell, again, just got a sex change so his friend could have a date, and it's implied that they had sex like it's just casually normal? Uh, it's like a normal thing to do for your friend? I don't know, is it? Maybe I'm a bad friend. No matter what, this show makes you laugh when you least expect it. It's weird, but never too weird to the point where it's not funny. I'd compare it to something like regular show where it starts off semi-normal, but then goes to an insane place, but overall, it all just works in the show's favor. Right now, the show is getting mostly favorable reviews, with most fan scores even higher. I feel like it just needs a few more episodes to take off and really build its following, but this could be a really big show. I recommend starting now if you want that hipster cred. Overall, it's a 9 out of 10, but arbitrary number ratings are dumb, so just know it's good and you should watch it. You can watch it on Adult Swim's website, I think it's on like an app, online, you can watch it if you try hard enough. But as always, what do you guys think? Have you seen it? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Let us know in the comments down below. If you want more Roundtable, tweet to me, at it's Retro Nemo, or the Roundtable at Roundtable Vids with our Instagram and Facebook under the same name. Check out our Snapchat Roundtable YT for little goose we captured throughout the day. If you're feeling extra generous, consider supporting us on Patreon. And if you're feeling extra social, check out our Discord and Amino app. If you want some fresh new clothes, check out the Roundtable store and maybe even consider getting a little Retro Nemo merch, you know, a little Rep the Wretch, you know what I'm saying? Oh god, cut that out. And don't forget to subscribe to the round table for more great cartoon content. Hit that notification bell to join our notification squad. I'm Retro Nemo. This was a review of the jellies, and I'll see you guys next time. It's good, watch it.